Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to look at some of the top visual issues you might run into SketchUp and how to fix them with as little as one button click. Okay, so visualization issues, I know it's kind of a vague description. Uh, stuff going on on your screen in your model that you don't expect or don't want to be happening. Does that make sense? So this isn't modeling issues, this isn't geometry's not right, this is uh, it doesn't look the way I told it I wanted it to look. Um, we see these things on the forum all the time, and it's funny because like, I would say majority of the time, there's a super simple fix, something that wasn't quite set up right or a setting that's wrong, um, and we're going to run through a bunch of those right now. Okay, so first one, you guys have probably already seen it. See these dashed edges in back here? These show up. Uh, these are back edges. So this is a function inside of SketchUp. This is intentional. It's supposed to work this way. Uh, this is showing where the back edges are. The edges that aren't visible to the camera are overlaid onto my model. So all these little dashed lines are actually the back edges, and this is a function that is supposed to happen this way to show me where those are. So this is without going into uh, to X-ray mode where I see through the model, which is a very intensive process to, to make everything see through. This is a short, simple, sweet, much lighter process. So you're working the big model and you want to see where the back edges are, where the, the stuff you can't see is. Back edges will let you see that without having to do an x-ray on the whole model. That's the idea behind it. Um, people toggle it on on accident all the time because the default shortcut key for it is just K. If you were typing and you hit a K or something like that, or you, you go to hit L to hit the line, you accidentally tap K, something like that, your back edges will show up. Fortunately, it's just as easy to turn off as it is to turn on. You could hit K, the shortcut key, or if you like menus, you can go to View, Edge Style, and right there, see it's toggled on. You can just toggle it off, and that goes away. Pretty simple. All right, next thing that comes up, I'm going to go over here into my Styles menu, and I'm going to look. Right now, I have Ambient Occlusion turned on, but I don't see those telltale little shadows. So what I do when that happens is I turn up the distance. No. Turn up the intensity. No. For some reason my ambient occlusion shadows are just not showing up. What is that about? Well, again, I'm going to say use that term again nine times out of ten, but often what happens is people see this issue and it's because their model's not to scale. So they either were haphazardly just went in and started modeling and didn't realize they were modeling something way bigger than they thought, or they accidentally scaled their model up, some, something like that. Um, the fact is ambient occlusion is a one-to-one -one effect. So it scales shadows at intersections based on reality and the scale of things in real life. So if I come in here, if I grab an edge and I go from one corner here to this corner over here, I can see that is currently 46,000 feet. No, 4,600, 4,600 feet, too big. Either So yeah, 46,000 would be big, but 4,600 is also too big. So this model got out of scale because this is supposed to be 32 feet. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I'm going to double click to enter this group, grab my tape measure, and tell it from here to here should be 32 foot enter. Do you want to scale this group? Yes, I do. There we go. And then I'm just going to hit, zoom. Oh, see, immediately, see those shadows pop right in there? They're a little excessive right now, so I may want to actually come in and maybe dial them back just a little bit, maybe a little less intense. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be a haunted house and they should be intense. Anyhow, that will get that for you. There we go. All right, next issue, you're probably already seeing it on your screen. See as I rotate how I'm like, especially look at these columns right here. It's easiest to see here. See how they're just jumping back and forth like crazy? That is an issue that is actually pretty easy to fix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at exactly how to fix that problem. You all see right here, see the front and back faces kind of start popping through each other. This is not Z fighting. Some people see this and go, oh, that's just Z fighting. Those back edges are popping through, but these are actually, the faces are overlapping each other. As I move, these things are jumping by a couple pixels across back and forth on the screen. The issue with this is that this model is too far from the origin. This is the same issue that we run into with sometimes when you want to model really small geometry, it won't let you. Similar issues happen when you model too big of geometry. So this can happen with like an imported model with 
you know, real world location or, 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 uh, numbers in here where, where this is, ends up real far away from where the origin is. So first thing I want to do is go to view and see if my axes are turned on. They are turned on. Okay. So now how do I get this? Oh, I saw, I saw it go by. There's my axis. See that? And I am so, so far away from it. I can't even see. Oh, there it is. All right. So let's do this. Let's grab this. Let's grab by the corner and let's try to get to the axis. I'm going to zoom way, I'm zoom way out and I'm just come over here, click on the axis and then let's go back to, there we go. So I grabbed an arbitrary corner, which turned out to be that one. I'll probably fix that up now and say like um, that corner should be in there. But you can see now as I, oh, see, nice, clean, nice, clean orbiting. That's awesome. All right. So something else, some of you probably are already seeing this and going, I, I have a weird perspective on this. This doesn't, this almost looks like, I don't know, some, something feels weird about this perspective. And I don't know, some people will hit this, some people will like, it almost feels like an isometric view and I'm not getting that true perspective. So it doesn't look like a real model. It looks wonky, it looks off. Um, if I come up to camera, and I see that it's not in parallel projection, but it is in perspective, but it still feels almost like it's in parallel projection. It's hard to describe, but you can see like, when I look at this right here, I would expect this back edge of this roof to look significantly smaller than this because this is closer to me and this as it goes in the distance should come together, but it almost looks parallel or even flared out, which is a little bit of an optical illusion, but this happens sometimes. Um, so if you go up here and you're in parallel projection, you switch to perspective, everything fixes, that's great. But if you're already in perspective, it means your field of view is probably set extremely low. So if I click on field of view and look down the lower right corner, yep, it's set to one. So what I'm going to do is set it to the default is about 35. So if I hit 35 and hit enter, there you go. See how that makes much more, it just looks more real. So if I look at this, See that the front edge is wider than the back edge. So it, it gets smaller as the as the model goes off in the distance. Just a more natural look. This is not, you don't have to do this, but a lot of people expect their models to look like this when you're working with the in 3D. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and that is a quick and easy fix. Just check your field of view. Check to see that you actually are in perspective view. All right. So another thing that might happen that looks weird is why do I have a gray chimney? If I pick on this face of the material and I click Entity Info, it tells me this material is this terracotta color, but for whatever reason, it's showing up as gray. Um, well, that gray color is actually the back. So in Entity Info, I have two boxes, the front face and the back face. The back face has looks like two materials, but this is actually telling me it's a two-sided material. The back face has a material that on the front is white and on the back is this blue gray. And since these are all showing up as blue gray, it's telling me that those face, I'm seeing the back face. If I want to double check this, I can go to my view and I can go to face style and I can turn on monochrome. Monochrome is going to show everything front or back faces. You can see very clearly that is all back face. So I easy fix again, select the faces that are back face, right click, and hit reverse face and they come out white in monochrome and if I go back up to face style and turn shade with textures on again that's the proper color that was what I'm looking for right there so if you ever see materials that look like they're not quite right or they're showing up as gray or whatever your back face color is easy enough to flip them I'm seeing one more issue right here this material I don't understand what's going on there why is that Oh, if I zoom in, I can see it is a brick material. It just somehow got scaled down. So it's easy enough to select materials and go to position. And with position, you can rotate, change scale, that sort of thing. But if you ever get it to the point where it's not the way you want it to be, you do have the option of going to texture and hitting reset position. That will put it back to the default, the way it was originally applied to the material. So that's something that surprisingly people run into materials of different scales, not just not just scaled small, but scaled large. Like, why are my bricks three feet tall each? There's a possibility that the material got scaled. So there you go. I said a handful 
what was that six different things that could happen in your SketchUp model and how to quickly and I gotta say pretty easily get them fixed um, this of course like I said is not comprehensive there's other things you might run into and maybe you have seen some visual issues and you fix them or maybe you've seen some visual issues and you don't know how to fix them they're still an issue for you if either of those is true, leave us a comment down below. Tell us about issues you've run into and how you've gotten past them, or tell us issues that you're still running into and you need help with. If you haven't already done it too, hop in there and hit like if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment. Like I said, tell us about those issues you run into or if you have an idea for a different video that you think would be good. You like making these videos a lot, you like me more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.